Hello students, welcome to the course on mechanical vibrations. We were discussing the concepts from free vibrations and today we will discuss the concepts of free torsional vibrations and also we are going to solve numericals onto it. So as the torsional vibrations you can see in the figure we are having a shaft and to that shaft we are having a disc attached and now if this disc is given an angular displacement which is perpendicular to the axis of the shaft then the vibrations which are going to take place will be called as torsional vibrations and now there is no damping present or there is no force of application is present that's why this case of vibration is known as free torsional vibrations so for getting the natural frequency of these type of torsionally vibratory systems we have to go for again the free body diagram and we have to apply the D. Alembert's principle. So let us apply D. Alembert's principle. So let us apply the D. Alembert's principle. So, as the shaft is going to rotate, there will be an inertial force which is opposite to the direction of angular displacement which is going to be applied. So, direction will be anticlockwise and we will have the inertial torque as I theta double dot which is a pseudo torque which opposes the motion. So, where I is mass moment of inertia, so to calculate I you need to use formula as mk square where m is the mass and k is the radius of gyration. gyration. Then the shaft is not going to allow this disc to rotate. So, the total stiffness of the shaft in case of torsional vibration we are treating it as kt. Now, how to calculate the torsional stiffness of the shaft, we will see. First of all, we will write down the formula for bending equation. So, the formula for bending equation goes like this. E by R is equal to M by I is equal to f by y. Similarly, there is a formula for torsion equation. So, on to the same print, we will have here, instead of E, here we will have G upon L by theta is equal to T by J and this is equal to tau by r. So, let us see what are the different terms we are having. So, g is nothing but modulus of rigidity. L is the length of the shaft and theta is the twist, angle of twist. Now, together L by theta is called as length per angular twist. Then T is the torque, J is the polar moment of inertia, tau is the torsional shear stress and R is the radius of the shaft. Now, similarly, we have seen that stiffness for longitudinal vibration was given by force by the displacement. Similarly, the torsional stiffness is given as torque applied upon the angular displacement. So, let us rearrange the the torsion equation in such a way that we will get the torsional stiffness equation. So, we will divide T by theta 
and we'll have the equation as gj by l which is nothing but equal to the torsional stiffness where g is the modulus of rigidity which is a material property j is the polar moment of inertia which is geometric property l is the length of the shaft which is again a geometric property so this is the way with which you can calculate the value of kt and now if you want to find out the equation of motion for this torsional vibratory system how to get it so there are only two torques one is inertial torque which is given as i theta double dot and k t theta and this this is the restoring torque and there is no force which is applied on to this and this is a case of free vibration so right hand side of the equation is equal to g we can rearrange this as theta double dot plus k t by i theta is equal to zero and now we can rearrange this in terms of omega that is theta double dot plus omega n square theta is equal to zero wherein omega n is under root of k t by i again the unit is radians per second similarly you can get the value of f n that is omega n by 2 pi so in this case it becomes 1 by 2 pi under root of k t by r so the unit for this will be cycles per second or hertz so this is called as circular frequency circular frequency So this is how we can get the natural frequency for torsional vibratory systems. So now let us see what are the different types of numericals we can have onto this. So this is the first numerical. The numerical statement goes like this. A shaft of 100 mm diameter. So the diameter of the shaft is given as 100 mm. And the length of the shaft is given as 1 meter. So, you have to convert the diameter of the shaft into meters. So, this becomes 0.1 meters. Now, that shaft has been fixed. One end of the shaft is fixed and the other end carries a disc of having mass as 500 kg and its radius of gyration is given as 450 mm that is nothing but 0 0.45 meters and the modulus of rigidity that is g is given as 80 giga newton per meter square that it means 10 raised to 9 newton per meter square and it has been asked to find out the natural frequency in radians per second and in hertz also so we know that what is the formula for natural frequency so your omega n is under root of kt by i so let us find out all these terms and put it into this equation. So kt is nothing but g theta by l, gj by l, sorry, gj by l. So the second numerical goes like this. A flywheel is mounted on a vertical shaft. You can see here this is the flywheel. And the both ends of the shafts are fixed and the diameter of the shaft is 50 mm. So we can get it into meters as like this. And we will directly calculate the value of I from this. So this is pi by 32 
d raise to 4. So, this is pi by 32 into 0 0.05 raise to 4. And now, the value, if we are doing the calculation, we are getting it as 0 0.6 into 10 raise to minus 6 meter raise to 4. Then they have given the mass of the flywheel as 500 kg. The radius of gyration is given as 0 0.5 meters. And you have been asked to find out the natural frequency in Fn and omega n. And they have given the modulus of rigidity as 80 into 10 raised to 9 Newton per meter square. So now, if you are able to recall the concepts of spring and mass system, wherein springs are arranged in series and parallel, we can see here the sp springs are arranged. Springs are arranged in parallel here. So now you can see here. The shafts are divided with the help of flywheel, but both the shafts are attached to the fixed frame. So, this type of arrangement is for springs arranged in parallel. So, wherein you have to calculate Kt1 for this shaft and Kt2 for this shaft. And the K equivalent will be equal to Kt1 plus kt2. So, let us calculate kt1 first. So, the formula is gj by l. So, kt1 means shaft l1 which is having length as l1. So, g is 80 into 10 raise to 9 into j we have found out as 0 0.6 into 10 raise to minus 6 divided by l1 is 0 0.9. So, if you are doing the math we are getting this as 56 into 10 raised to 3 Newton meter. And similarly, we can get the value of Kt2 as Gj by L2. So, again G is 18 into 10 raised to 9 into 0 0.6 into 10 raised to minus 6 divided by L2 is 0.6. If we are doing the calculation of it, we will get it as 84 into 10 raise to 3 Newton meter. And the K equivalent is equal to Kt1 plus Kt2, which is equal to, if we are doing the summation of it, we are getting this as 140 into 10 raise to 3 Newton meter. Now, we need to find out the value of i. So, i is m k square. So, m is 500 into k is 0.5 square. We will get the value as 125 kg meter square. And if we want to find out f n, we want to find out f n. So, f n is equal to 1 by 2 pi under root of kt by i. So, 1 upon 2 pi kt equivalent is 140 into 10 raise to 3 divided by i is 125. So, we are getting the final value as pi u 0 0.32. So, this is how you can have the concept of springs arranged in parallel for torsional vibrations also. So, the concepts of spring are in series and parallel which is applicable to longitudinal vibration, it is also applicable to torsional vibrations also. So, let us see another numerical. So, the numerical statement goes like this. The disc of torsional vibration pendulum having mass moment of inertia as 600 kg centimeter square. So, 600 kg centimeter square. So, the mass moment of inertia I is given directly as 600 
kg centimeter square and it is immersed in viscous fluid that is this is a case of torsional damped vibrations and which type of damping is present here the viscous damping so in this numerical i will give you the procedure how to solve this the students have to take this as a homework and try to complete the solution so the brass shaft is having diameter as 10 cm and the length is 40 cm long and the, when the pendulum is vibrating the observed amplitudes on the same side of the rest position for successive amplitudes are that is theta 0 is 9 degree theta 1 is 6 degree and theta 2 is 4 degree and it has been asked to find out the value of delta then what is the damping torque at unit velocity that is torque upon unit velocity is angular displacement that is theta dot and uh, we can calculate this ct so that is damping coefficient for torsional vibrations and we have to calculate time period of vibration so before that we have to calculate fn so let us only discuss what is the procedure so to calculate delta we need to have the equation 2 pi zeta upon under root of 1 minus zeta square then to get the value of zeta you need to have c upon cc for torsional vibrations c is with c you want to find out zeta you need to find out cc now to solve this problem you have to use another equation of delta which is 1 by n log to the base e for torsional vibrations the equation amplitudes are going to change from theta 0 to theta n all other terms remains same so you can use the equation as this 1 by 1 log to the base e theta 0 is 9 degree and theta 1 is 6 degree so from this you can get the value of delta that value of delta you can put it into this equation and you can get the value of zeta and the value of cc will be 2 under root kt into i so i is given you need to find out kt so the kt value will be equal to g theta gj by l so g you need to assume here because it is not given so we will assume this as 18 into 10 raised to 9 into j is pi by 32 d raised to 4 and length of the shaft is given that is 40 centimeter long from that you can get the value of kt you can put it into this i is with us we can get the value of cc so once you have get, got the value of cc from this you can get the value of c so we got the delta we got the ct and the natural frequency is nothing but 1 by 2 pi under root of kt by i so kt is known i is known you can get the fn and time period is nothing but 1 upon natural frequency so the unit for time period will be seconds so this is how we can solve the problem of free torsional vibrations and torsionally damped vibrations also so students needs to complete this problem onto their own thank you